You're listening to the Frequency and Flow podcast with Brie Couric, episode number 49. In this episode, I'm going to be discussing what is typically the third major inflection point in the journey of a solopreneur, creating the perfect sales and marketing strategy for your business and for you personally, and how to navigate that pressure that you'll face at this point in your journey. This is the fourth episode of a six episode series that I'm calling the Pressurized Soulpreneur. In this series, I'm gonna be discussing and contemplating the impact that these pressure centers have at different stages in the soulpreneur journey. From the initial business idea or passion that you're ready to monetize, all the way to scaling your business. How you can recognize these pressures and how you can manage them in relation to your own intuition. So if you haven't already, go back and listen to the first episode of the Pressurized Soulpreneur series, episode number 46, how your human design pressure centers impact your business and go forward from there. If you're all caught up, then let's dive in. In 2019 and in early 2020, I decided to go all in on the marketing analytics and marketing metrics and reporting niche in my online business management company. I was in working specifically with marketing metrics and analytics and all those things that make many solopreneurs cringe, a lot of numbers, a lot of Excel or Google Sheets. It was something that I knew was a way that I could stand out in a sea of online business managers. I had over 10 years of experience in that specific area of marketing. Um, you know, starting when I started my career, my corporate career, and had continued to gain experience over the course of a decade. And so it's something that I knew really, really well. And I knew it was something that a lot of online entrepreneurs either ignored or avoided or just knew it was something that they needed, but they had no idea where to start. So to me, it felt like a huge opportunity that was just ripe for the picking. It was truly a way that I felt I could build a specific niche around something that I knew very well and would add immense value to the work that I was doing for my clients, both existing clients and that I could do for new potential clients. And it seemed like it was just a win-win and my ticket to entrepreneurship entrepreneurial success. And so once I made that decision, the next question became, how do I let people know that this is what I do and how I'm different from other online business managers that they see on the internet, given that I have this very specific expertise and skill set? I knew that I needed to promote myself as a data-driven OBM, as someone who loved the metrics, as someone who understood them, someone who could build reports, help them understand, entrepreneurs understand what their ROI was or is on certain, you know, the efforts that they're putting into their business. I needed a marketing strategy. <laughs> and I was still at that point trying to figure out my messaging and my own positioning. I was still trying to also hone in on what my offers were going to be. But at the same time, I also knew that I needed to get started in terms of getting the word out there about what my business was, what it does, and what this new like area that I was going to be focusing on, this new niche And I knew I needed to do it as soon as possible. I didn't want to miss out on any potential opportunities for one moment longer. I knew the sooner I started talking about what I wanted to do, the sooner I started connecting with the entrepreneurs that needed me most. I knew I needed to get started and I knew the rest, such as the messaging and the positioning and the offers themselves would come after that. So as a way to begin taking action to start putting the word out there, I decided to try the the very trendy marketing tactic of the moment in that late 2019, early 2020 um, time, (laughs) which was creating a Facebook group. That was the way, that was the very trendy way to 
grow, um, you know, a potential, your target audience to reach more people was creating a Facebook group. And it honestly makes me giggle now because at this moment where as I'm recording this in summer 2022, Facebook groups are no longer a really popular marketing tactic. They work in some situations, but the the trendiness of them has definitely dwindled. They're definitely not as popular as they used to be. Um, there's still some that exist, but it, it's not the, you know, whereas in 19, 2019 and 2020, basically everyone was telling you to start a Facebook group and everyone was starting a Facebook group. Now it's not so common anymore. <laughs> So it kind of makes me giggle that, you know, this is how quickly sometimes trends can come and go because it wasn't all that long ago that Facebook groups were the thing and now not so much. And it's been, you know, about two years or even less in some cases, Um, you know, again, in 2019, 2020, this is like a new hot tactic uh, that entrepreneurs are seeing incredible success with. When I think about this in 2022 terms, you know, it's kind of like TikTok. Like I feel like TikTok has that same like fire underneath it as being the new hot marketing trend to get in on right now. And so going back to that time in 2019, 2020, I created a Facebook group for data-driven entrepreneurs and I started promoting it everywhere on Instagram, on YouTube, on my email list, everywhere. I created a content plan for within that group and I followed every single best practice that I knew of at the time in terms of Facebook groups, like how often to post, what type of content to post. I created a plan where I felt like I was working ahead and it felt great. And I got that into motion. So I was doing marketing to get people into the group and then I had a marketing plan for people who were in the group to just nurture them and engage them and things like that. I followed literally every single best practice I could find. I got that into motion as as far as a marketing tactic for this new business went. I felt so ready for massive growth and I was ready for engagement. I was ready to speak to my ideal potential clients. And I started to visualize all those new clients pouring in. And after a couple weeks, I think I only had maybe a handful of clients who had joined the group. After a couple months, I I started really feeling uninspired. You know, I was getting people trickling in, but it was very few and far between. People weren't really engaged. You know, they were asking to join the group and then they weren't really engaging with the content at all. And so a couple months in, I really started feeling uninspired and resentful around the content that I needed to create for the group itself. I was like, well, why should I be creating these things if no one's engaging with it? What am I doing? How do I get them to engage more? And I really started, you know, feeling that resentful, that bitterness, that that projector, not self. Um, And I realized that, you know, yes, creating a Facebook group was a cool and trendy thing to do and was working for a lot of people. But for me personally, I wasn't a huge fan of Facebook groups at all. And so it kind of seemed like it was very, um, you know, out of alignment where I was like, I don't even really like Facebook groups. Why am I creating this marketing strategy that has me in Facebook groups? And it was something where at the time I was recommended to do this. It was like, well, this is the thing. This is the thing you have to do. And it was only like I wasn't really listening to my intuition at the time. I kind of was just doing what I quote unquote should be doing. And then I realized once it was going and that bitterness and that resentment and that frustration really started popping up that I finally decided to get honest with myself. (laughs) Probably about 90 days or three months into this Facebook group experiment, I still had, I don't know, no more than like a few dozen people, probably less than 50 people in the group. And like I said, my projector not self of bitterness and resentment was off the charts. Yet, I was still forcing myself to create content because that Facebook group was supposed to work. It was the thing that was working right now for people. And it wasn't working for me, and I was super bitter about it. (laughs) And once I finally had that understanding and awareness of what I was doing and how I was feeling about it, and the fact that it just was not in alignment for me, 
I stopped everything I was doing for that group immediately, like just stopped the content plan, stopped really thinking about it, kind of just let it go dormant. And when I had that chance to reflect once I was done in that content, uh, like <laughs> that content carousel, <laughs> when I finally stopped that and I had a chance to reflect and once I allowed myself to get past the shame and the regret of this marketing failure, I was able to see exactly what went wrong and why. I was able to see that instead of marketing myself and my business in an aligned way, I had caved to the pressure that I felt from my human design head center and root center, that pressure to uh, think and to plan and to act. I had caved to all of that pressure instead of creating the space that I needed for my intuition to lead the way and let, you know, help me feel into if it was actually right for me to create that in Facebook group or not. Because I was so desperate for my business to succeed and I was genuinely so excited about this niche that I had landed upon or like decided was going to be for me. I was genuinely excited about it, but I was so desperate for it to take off that I just blindly followed and forced what was supposed to work instead of tuning into what was actually the right strategy and the right tactics for me and what really worked for me and what really worked for my audience. I, I let myself cave into that pressure without really listening to what my intuition was telling me and giving it space to speak to me. So if you've been following this podcast series, The Pressurized Soulpreneur, you know that I've been taking you on this adventure through the journey of entrepreneurship and these key inflection points in an entrepreneur or solopreneur's journey. And these, these inflection points are pressure points. And these pressure points are things, again, that you are going to face at different stages of your journey. And we started with the decision to monetize your passion and your creative expression. And then we covered uh, the decision last week to go all in on your business. And today we are discussing the pressure that you face as you grow your business with an effective marketing and sales strategy. And unlike traditional corporate business that usually revolves around product development and operations, Online business actually revolves around your ability to market yourself or your business effectively, first and foremost. Whereas, you know, a corporate ecosystem of the different functions of a corporation really focus on the product and the ability to innovate that specific product. But online business is truly the business of being able to market yourself and create a brand and a marketing strategy that helps you stand out in a sea of what's, you know, in the online internet world. And so this means that by default, your marketing strategy is one of the most important, if not actually the most important aspects of your entire business. Okay, talk about pressure, right? And that's probably why you're here listening to me right now. The pressure to have the most perfect sales and marketing strategy for you can be enough to stop you in your tracks or take your breath away. Like it can feel, that pressure can feel like a lot. And even as someone like me who has a lot of marketing and sales experience under my belt before I created this business, it's still, I mean, I still have been susceptible to that pressure myself as you heard in this story about this failed Facebook group. The truth is, is that marketing itself is both an art and a science. There are concepts and principles that are tried and true over the span of decades, over all the different eras of marketing and trends and tactics that we see. But there's also so much room to apply these concepts and principles in way, different ways and finding ways to apply these principles and concepts that are aligned for you, which can be daunting. And why sometimes it just feels easier to decide to kind of copy and paste the strategies and tactics that seem to be working with others. For me at the time, in order to get the word out about this new offering and this new positioning that I had, it felt easier for me to just do that tactic that was working for everyone else that was creating a Facebook group instead of thinking about what strat marketing strategies and tactics actually felt aligned for me. And that's exactly what I did is I caved to that pressure 
it felt easier to just copy someone else's like the way that they use that trend and tactic in their own business. And when I decided to create that Facebook group, it was a marketing tactic that was in general could have worked or did work for people, but it was completely wrong for me and for my business. And as I've mentioned this in previous episodes of the Pressurized Soulpreneur podcast series, we face these two types of pressure at each of these major inflection points in our business. And of course, we face these pressures in life in general, but that's a different story for a different day. I'm focusing, of course, specifically on the soulpreneur journey that we're all on. So these two pressures, first, there's the pressure to think and to figure everything out which comes from your human design head center at the very top of your human design chart. And then there's also the pressure to act and to progress forward, which comes from your human design root center, which is at the very bottom of your chart. And I've talked about these extensively in the first, definitely the first episode of this podcast series and each subsequent one. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about these, but these two pressure centers put tremendous pressure on you in these specific inflection points in your business. And depending on if you have these centers defined, undefined, or open, you're going to experience these pressures in different ways, either consistently or in waves of intensity and in, through different lenses. But ultimately, what you experience in the context of this pressure is the same. You feel like you need to have that perfect in this case, that perfect marketing and sales strategy to do it right and to get it out there as quickly as possible without really thinking if it's aligned for you or not. Going back again, we've talked about how this actually affects you in the earlier episodes of this series, but that pressure is always there. So in today's episode, I'm really talking about how it applies to this specific inflection point in your journey, which is that that inflection point of growing your business, like making, becoming more visible and growing your business through your sales and marketing strategy and finding the most perfect way for you to become more visible through your business. So when we think about it from the head center, you know, again, that's, that's the pressure to have it all figured out, the pressure for ideas and inspiration, the pressure to have it all planned out and like thought out ahead. <laughs> Your head center impacts this pressure to get visible. It's the pressure to have a comprehensive marketing strategy in place. In a way, it's kind of that all or nothing approach where, you know, using my own example, it's the pressure where I went all in on this marketing tactic of creating a Facebook group where I had two different marketing plans, the marketing plan to get people into the group and the marketing plan for the people in the group and getting them to engage. It was very all or nothing. Like, you know, I decided to go all in and I created these marketing plans and I did it really quick without thinking about if it was right for me or not, just because I felt that pressure that it was what was working for everyone else. And it's also thinking about how, you know, or feeling like you can't become visible or your marketing's not going to work unless you have an entire funnel in place. It's like really like that all or nothing. Like I can't just do this. If I start talking about things, if I start that Instagram account, I have to have a funnel. I have to have a lead magnet. I have to have, you know, a welcome sequence. I have to have a whole like thing figured out. And like that pressure to either go all in or not being able to launch until you have that entire foundation created, that is the pressure from your head center when it comes to your uh, marketing and sales. It's also the pressure to follow what works for other people or to copy the tactics of someone that you admire or follow, such as what I did with that Facebook group. It can also be the pressure that you put on your entire marketing ecosystem to be perfect and flawless. And you know, thinking that you can't talk about what you do until you have that entire marketing. And when I say marketing ecosystem, that's everything. That's the funnel. That's how you get people into the funnel. That's how you your funnel gets people from one stage to another and ultimately how you sell someone and turn a potential client into an actual client. There is so much pressure to get it all right, to get it all figured out, to get 10 steps ahead before you feel like you can start to talk about your services. All of these pressures are head center pressures. And when we look at this from the root center, when you're at this stage where you're really trying to become more visible and grow your visibility, grow your audience and all of the, and 
create more clients from potential clients. When you think about it from the root center perspective, which is the pressure to act, to grow, to evolve, you know, this is really the pressure to be visible everywhere by creating content for every channel. So it's not just doing what you're good at. It's saying, well, if I'm going to do this, I need to be on this channel. I need to be on this channel. I need to be on TikTok because that's where the most potential is. But I need to also be on Instagram and I need to create a podcast and I need to do this and I need to do that. Like that is root center pressure. That is something to just really be aware of. Your root center pressure when it comes to this visibility and expanding your visibility is also the pressure to do something or anything to just get started with that without at least having some sort of brand strategy or marketing strategy in place. So this is like just throwing stuff out there and hoping it'll work without taking the beat to think about if it's actually right for you or to put a little bit more of a cohesive strategy around it before you just start posting a bunch of things. The root center pressure when it comes to this, you know, um, this inflection point in your business is also the pressure that you put on each piece of content to perform for you and to be the one that transforms your business. There's so many people, you know, potential clients and friends and peers that I have in this industry who, you know, they put so much pressure on each piece of content. Like, oh, I, I did this amazing reel, but it just, you know, got crickets. And that all of that pressure is really root center pressure. I have a great podcast episode all about this, which is actually episode number 31, the magic within one piece of marketing content. So if you feel this pressure where you're kind of going through those emotional cycles of putting pressure on one piece of content or post to perform and um, definitely listen to that. So Ultimately, you know, you feel this head center pressure, you feel this root center pressure, and ultimately the perfect marketing strategy is finding the perfect strategy for you. It doesn't matter what's trendy for other people, what's working for other people. If it doesn't feel good for you and it doesn't feel aligned for you, it's not the perfect marketing strategy for you. You need to feel into and understand your human design through just your tapping into your intuition to find the perfect strategy for you. And that is what is the perfect marketing strategy. A lot of people think that they have to find the answers to what is the perfect strategy, you know, like through what other people do, or there's this key or the secret to the perfect marketing strategy. And none of that matters if it doesn't feel right and it doesn't align with your energy and your intuition. So I say this once and I'll say this a thousand times more, the perfect marketing strategy for everyone, like that secret to the marketing strategy doesn't exist. It's whatever is the perfect marketing strategy for you. That's what matters. Because anything else leads to burnout, it leads to frustration, resentment, anger, disappointment, you name it, whatever that not self is, that is what it leads you to. If you don't follow your intuition, if you don't follow your energy, if you're just copying and pasting what works for other people, it's never going to work for you unless it is you do the work to really tap into if it's what your intuition is aligned with, what your energy is aligned with. So how do you navigate and mitigate this pressure by finding your perfect marketing strategy? Ultimately, awareness and recognition of this pressure is the first step. Just by being aware, that's why I in each of these episodes, I really go through like what in a real context, like what does do, will you experience this pressure as? Because as soon as you have awareness of it and recognition of it, that really helps alleviate and mitigate the pressure. Just by having this awareness, it, it might not make that pressure go away, but at least you can manage it and, and maneuver around it or deploy some of your tools to help you mitigate the pressure itself. So how do you move forward even when you do feel that pressure because you're going to feel it. Like it's not a matter of if you're going to feel it or not. It's just how much do you feel it and how do you work around it? So I think when it comes to becoming more visible, to creating a marketing strategy that works for you, it's really important for you to understand like what is the minimum that you need to do in order to get started? I think it's really important before you launch this full scale marketing strategy or you get yourself caught up in posting to all these different platforms and things like that. It's really important for you to understand who you serve, like who your target audience is, 
how you serve them, what your values and approach are, why you're best for them, so what makes you unique, and what you're ultimately trying to promote or guide them towards. So what offer, you know, whether it's a free offer or a paid offer, and then ultimately where can they learn more? Like is that a landing page you're sending them to or are you trying to get their email address? And it's really important for you to have a clear idea of what that strategy is and how you create magnetism and connection with your soulmate clients. So this is something that I teach in Radiant on Purpose is really like how to activate your magnetism and how to speak directly to your soulmate clients. Um, but it, you don't need a lot to be able to do that, but you need to understand how that how you need to understand that brand strategy, who you serve, how you serve them, why you're best for them, and getting that strategy in place in terms of how you actually like and tactically take um, take steps to do that, to let people to become more visible. That's what we do in Radiant on purpose. So that's kind of the first step is just, you know, what's the minimum that you need? You need to have a fundamental understanding of your brand and messaging strategy. And then you need to know just as simple as possible, what's the easiest way for you to get that message out there through a clear and concise, and it could be a simple marketing strategy. The next big step, you know, in terms of moving forward, when you feel this pressure and you feel this pressure may be stalling, stagnating, or, you know, causing you to pause, the next thing to do is to figure out what's your favorite way to share your expertise and how can you just get started? You know, do you like to write? Do you like to talk? Do you like to draw? <laughs> it's really important for you to show up where your audience is, but it's also important for you to communicate with them in a way that feels easy to you or as easy as possible. If you're someone who hates being on camera, then choosing a video strategy might not be the best for you. It might be good to practice it, but it's, you know, it, you really need to pick a strategy that's something that feels easy and feels flowy and feels aligned. It's important for you to do this in a way where you show up for your audience where they are and connect to the mindset of where they are at using modalities that feel good to you. So could it be blog writing? It could be doing Instagram posts, but in a way that feels good for you. And it's important to really start small. Just show up somewhere consistently. I have a couple of clients who just love to write. So their primary strategy is a blog and SEO strategy. For me personally, I love just having a weekly piece of content through this podcast specifically that I, you know, speaking to the camera or into the microphone like this is what's easiest for me to just do this once a week. And so that's the foundation of my content strategy and then how I get it out there just getting started to get it out there is, um, you know, finding people where they're at in terms of turning that into a blog for finding things that people might be searching on Google or trying to, you know, be on YouTube where people are searching for specific human design and business content. Um, and it's really important to just start small. Like you don't have to be everywhere at once. Just pick something and get consistent. It's important for you to recognize, embrace, and accept that the right strategies for you and your people, <laughs> like what works and what resonates with your target audience might not be the trendy tactic du jour <laughs> or what's working now for others. Going back to that Facebook group example, honestly, like I put so much time and energy into that Facebook group because that was what was supposed to work. And in the end, what I actually transitioned to is doing more YouTube content because a lot of people, when they don't know how to create a report or a dashboard, they're turning to YouTube. And so I really pivoted that Facebook group when I got frustrated and finally took a break to figure out what worked for me, how I like, you know, people are searching for this content, but they tend to go towards YouTube, which was great because I love recording to the video. <laughs> And so, or recording on video. So that was a much better fit for me than doing the Facebook group. And it's really important, ultimately, finally, you know, the last tip I have for you is to stay consistent. So how can you stay consistent for you? It's really important for you to just believe in the magic that the content that you put out there is going to meet the right people at the right time, at the right place in their journey. 
and just to lower your expectations in a way, you know, like don't put so much pressure on each piece of content to be the thing that makes you go viral or grow your following. You know, it's, it's honestly consistency over time is this, if I had to give you one secret to a marketing, you know, a successful marketing strategy, it's just being consistently you over time and over a long period of time. Because ultimately, marketing is a long game of just being consistent in a way that works for you. Like I said, I talk about this a lot more on podcast episode number 31, The Magic in One Piece of Marketing Content. And if you haven't listened to that one already, I definitely recommend you go listen to it. Um, Another thing when it comes to being consistent is to like, what does consistency mean to you? So is that your ego set? You know, if you have a defined ego center and defined root center, you can probably be more consistent than if you have an undefined or open ego center, undefined and open root center. So getting in touch with your human design and your blue energetic blueprints important to define what consistency is for you, but finding a level of consistency that works with your energy and doing that over the long game is the best thing that you can do. And like I said, this comes back a lot to my podcast journey. For me, making one piece of content once a week felt and putting it in a couple of strategic places has been what I've committed to and has been what works best for me. And so that is what I'm doing here. <laughs> so before you get too far caught up in the weeds of finding, creating your perfect copy and building out your funnel and your offers and your marketing tactics and how to sell to your audience, I want you to just take a step back and see the big picture. Before you think about creating that Facebook group, before you think of creating your TikTok, like take a step back and let's think about the big picture. The big picture is that your audience doesn't make a decision to invest in you and your business from one post, from one video, one article, or one podcast. The path to someone trusting you, liking you, knowing you, trusting you enough to invest in you is a series of small yeses over days, weeks, months, and sometimes even years. Like I, one of my clients that I work with, she just had a launch where some of the people investing with her were people who hadn't bought a single thing from her and had been following her for years. And so it's really important to have this long view that the path to investment and finding that ideal client is a series of small yeses that is what your marketing strategy and marketing tactics help that person take that small series of yeses over time. So what can you do and how can you be visible in a way that is consistent for you depending on your energetic blueprint over that long period of time so that your audience can get to know you and what you stand for over the long term? And the easiest way to do this, to think about this long-term approach and the series of small yeses over time, is to be as authentically you on the outside as you are on the inside and to have that alignment and authenticity um, from what's inside to what's outside. And knowing that even if you aren't getting the sales that you've hoped for today or tomorrow or next month, really trust that the people that you're meant to connect with and work with are just starting to either be introduced to you or, or are starting on that small that path of those small yeses over time. So it's really important for you to get into alignment, to figure out what works for you, and to sh keep showing up and keep doing it in the quote unquote easiest way possible for you, even though knowing, setting that expectation that it might take you some trial and error to get there. You know, the Facebook group example was totally trial and error. It was something I tried. It didn't work. I took a pause. I reflected on what I could do consistently to get people on that small that path of small yeses uh, over time. And that's how I ended up here doing this podcast, this video today. So if aligning your business and marketing strategy to your human design is something that's calling to you, you can take the first steps forward in my new free workshop series, Human Design, Marketing Strategy, and Business Alignment. This workshop series lays the foundation for creating and implementing an effective marketing strategy using your human design, a marketing strategy that aligns with your unique energy so you can continue to build, grow, and scale your purpose-driven business with less force, less frustration, and less burnout. And you can find the link below in the episode description. 
If you liked or resonated with what you heard today, make sure you share this episode with your community, tagging me at Brie Couric, or leaving me a five-star review on your favorite podcast platform. In the next episode of the Frequency and Flow podcast, and the fifth episode out of six in the Pressurized Soulpreneur podcast series, I'll be discussing the pressure around the fourth major inflection point that small business owners face and how to navigate it, the pressure to scale your business. I'll see you there.